All right. Um, I'm going to give you a title, and, and by the way, excuse the what appeared to be blood on my hands. Yeah. Um, when I went to the doctor today, the doctor went, what, what happened? And I said, a pit bulldog attacked me, and I had to kill it. <laughs> You'd have to know this guy to know his face right then, but, <clears throat> which didn't happen. This is dye that I got on my finger, so it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was forced to kill it. I did. <clears throat> I uh, okay, I have a uh, title for you that uh, might be a little different. It's, it's uh, entitled Pharisee, comma, elder son, comma, disciple, or harlot. Who do you want to be? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see what this is based on. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more reading tonight because uh, I was at the doctor and didn't get much of a chance to do this. So um, there are those who can never identify the son. And so uh, in context to what we've been sharing, we've been talking about the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. And um, in that story, we saw that there were the, the father had two sons, and we applied that to our heavenly father. And um, we saw in the story that the sons really weren't so different, just the, how they manifested. That the prodigal son went out and he took the father's goods and he went out and he spent it all and he ended up in the hog pen and then he finally came to himself i i like that better than a religious picture of him just repenting he came to himself and realized in my father's house with my father i have what i need and I'm going to arrive, arise and go back to my father. Also, you have the elder son who, when the father and the prodigal were making merry in the house, <clears throat> he, he came from the field. And we liken that to, you know, being in God's harvest field, serving God. And the, the elder son clearly was serving the Lord or serving the father, but not in the way that the, the father was wanting. So the father had to stop the feasting, stop the, the thing that brought him the most joy, which we, we decided there was another son that was being presented in that story. And it started with the father's heart um, recognizing that the son, and that's the way I, uh, even in my notes, I have the and son, all capitals. Um, and we, you remember we went through the scriptures and we saw uh, different verses that said, Beloved, now are you the sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when he, the son, shall appear. And we saw that the word appear there wasn't the word um, come back in the clouds. In fact, it was the word manifest, when he manifests through us. Um, then we shall be like him. And, you know, manifestation is a big reality. Man when, when you start manifesting things, whether bad or, or, or of God, that's a, that's a sure sign uh, but that particularly you are uh, when in relationship to the Lord. That's a sure sign that something real is happening in you because it's now not a work, it's not a, it's not a trying, it's not, tr it's not a, a new commitment, it's life. It's the life of Jesus. It's, you know, it's a manifestation of life through you. And that's what, that's what the Father is after. And, um, and I, we applied that to the prodigal son story, but it's clearly throughout the scriptures that that's what the father is after. And, um, and Galatians talking about that, that it pleased the father to reveal his son in us. And the, again, the word there is not 
um, salvation, it is to re that a Christian comes to a revelation of Christ where he begins to understand that it's no longer I that live but Christ. It is meant to be the life of Christ within us. And that is his, that's the Father's goal. That was the purpose before the foundation of the world. That's the purpose before sin ever happened. That's the purpose before uh, the devil ever showed up in the garden. That was his purpose for all things and creating all things is so that his son might be all and in all. Um, and so um, we're talking about this in relationship to um, that that we don't always see Jesus. We may be Christians, but we may not always see Jesus in one another. We may not always see the Son that is there. We may miss the reality of that, and we may mistake him for good, good works or being a good Christian. And Paul said, you know, it is no longer I that live, but Christ lives within me and that the glory should go to him. A lot of times we take that glory and we want to, um, we want to hold it to ourselves and hold ourselves up as something special and something, you know, something spiritual um, when indeed it may be the son himself. And we don't always recognize that or we may, we may deep down know that it's Jesus in us, but we may not acknowledge that. Um, and I've, I've seen that a lot recently in relationship to the grace of God, uh, people referring to the grace of God and, and they put more emphasis on grace than they do God, <laughs> you know, so it was the grace, it was grace that saved me, but it was God that saved us in his gracious heart. I mean, you, you, somehow we, we just get that out of the picture and we miss the heart of the Lord, and we miss um, being able to glorify Him, and um, and in so doing, we many times end up glorifying ourselves. And so, those truths that are throughout the New Testament and throughout the epistles, um, we've applied that to the prodigal son story, and we've applied it in a way that we can we would see past being born again into the life that God put within us. Because the phrase, phraseology born again can just mean, oh, I'm saved. But God didn't just save us. He put his son in us. He put his son in us. And frankly, he put his son in us and he'd like to see his son out of us. Not just our Christian service, but that our Christian service uh, stem forth from the tree, <laughs> from the cross, from Christ and him crucified, that it would come, that it would come out of that life and not just our um, uh, not just out of our love for Jesus. Did I just get in trouble? <laughs> not just out of our love for Jesus, but out of Jesus out of it being him, out of it, out of it breathing him through us, uh, out of it, it uh, being, uh, uh, as it were, holy ground that we're walking on all the time, not that we're super spiritual. I'm not talking about that at all. Jesus didn't act and look and seem super spiritual when he walked the earth, but he was the son of God. But not that we appear um, a certain spiritual way that impresses people because a lot of times our spirituality is not aimed towards God. It's aimed towards impressing one another. It's aimed, or it's aimed within that realm. It's aimed towards um, uh, becoming something within the church, within the, the system of, of, you know, whatever church system that uh, they have um, to, you know, if it's just being a children's church worker or this or that, 
taking satisfaction in that. And, and I'm not putting any of those things down. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying the service should be Christ in us able to fulfill the heart of the Father instead of it just being seen only in light of he's still way up there. And when we need help or when, when uh, um, we need strength or when we need uh, something in ministry to happen, that we look up there instead of say, Lord, you're in me. Let it be your life. Let it be, you know. Uh, sadly, a whole lot of our, a whole lot of our looking to God is looking that direction. And sadly, a whole lot of it is over our problems. You know, it's over our needs or our problems. You know, I have this problem, I have this need, um, and I need you to fix that. And he becomes a fixer to us far away that can send help. Uh, and again, that doesn't belittle at all not at all. It doesn't belittle the beauty of the Lord, that, but I would, I would that we could see that in the context of the beauty of the Lord who, who does that instead of my heavenly fixer. You know, oh, heavenly Father. Jesus said, when you pray, pray this. Our fixer. <laughs> no, he said, our Father, which art in heaven. And so... Um, um, the, the prodigal son's story to me draws out my heart for the father, not just for the son, but for the father, for the father. And uh, Jesus constantly, constantly um, referred to the father. And, and he said, um, I do always those things that please the father. And when I hear that, when, when we hear that, we get, we get a, uh, a heart uh, statement from him. Not even a heart statement, a heart breathing. A, a joy, there's a feasting and a joy that he has with the father like the prodigal son when he returned and it began to be the son. He began to recognize that the father wanted the son out of him and not just a repentant believer. And he killed the fatted calf and in that representing the altar and in that representing uh, what we are not only supposed to look to for our life, the, again, the tree, the cross, not, not only what we're supposed to look to in our life, but the very thing that we're supposed to eat, the sacrifice, the, the Passover, to, to, to not just put its blood on our door and, oh, thank God, I'm safe. Thank God my family is safe, see? And, and again and again, I'm going to have to keep saying, I'm not putting down the, the, the glory of God to protect our families and to protect us. But at what point does the sweet savor of the sacrifice of Christ in us rise to the Father and, and he gets to smell that selfless one? At what point does that happen? And, and we say, well, it, it happens in my life at least, you know, three times every six months, you know, or something like that. When we, we think about it, we think about something and we go, okay, I want to do that now. But manifestation is... Is life. It's the. It's the. It's almost like giving birth. Uh, it. It's. It actually. Is not giving birth. It is the result of life being birthed in us. But it is, almost like giving birth to the world, like Mary. You know, she had Jesus inside of her for a long time, but nobody could see him. <laughs> you know, we go, oh, I got Jesus in me. You know, was well, anybody ever get to see him? No, but you can see my bump. You know, um, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. And so that bringing forth, that bringing forth 
um, of Jesus was a manifestation of the life that was already in Mary. And it's just a picture to us. I mean, whatever she had in her came out and she no longer had him in there. With us, we have him in us. And we can give birth, as it were. I'm just using this terminology, and it's probably not the best. We can give birth. We can give manifestation to him over and over and over. Um, you know, even Jesus, who said, um, you know, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, because you have love one for another. Well, you know, God is love. I mean, the, the love that we have is agape. It's God. It's not it's not us being compassionate. It is the very God that, that is between us. You know, not, not Christian kindness, but the very God who is between us, the very life of God that we all have within us, the very, the very, uh, the, the very selfless one who gave himself on the cross, yet gives himself, yet is birthed through us, as it were, manifested through us time and time again on the same level, the same level of, of uh, his nature, of his way, of his giving, of his loss that we may gain, that others may gain. And, you know, we, he did it for us. He lost so that we may gain. And now we're one with him. We're one. We're one. We're one. We're one with him. We're one. And being one with him means more than a doctrine. It means more than um, hope for our flesh in the future so that we'll go in the rapture or we'll be saved or we'll miss out. We'll, we'll not have to worry about punishment someday or that. To be one with him is hope for hope for the world through us or hope for us that something more comes out of us than us, you know. And, you know, there's not, a, there's not a person on the planet that this doesn't apply to, you know. We all need an increase of Christ, and that's what Paul prayed for, for the churches. You know, and he prayed for that manifestation. I, what, Galatians 4, 19, I, I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. So it's like, it's like, it's, it's a different picture than birth, but it's probably more real than birth being a shadow instead of trying to fit that. And that is, he's travailing. He's the one going through this stuff. He's the one praying. He's the one desiring that for them. But what is he desiring? That you would be better Christians, that you would pray more, that you would read your Bibles. He didn't mention any of those things. He mentions that Christ may be formed in us. And he's talking to Christians. He's talking to people that have Christ. But he's wanting that to be more real than, than our theology. <laughs> because our theology is a lot of times not too real. <laughs> It's just, you know, he's, he's wanting, you know, theology is the, theo, the study of God, ology, the study of God. We're not, we're not studying God, you know, my God. He's trying to figure us out. <laughs> he's wanting us to be with him. He's, he's looking for that. So anyway, um, I, um, I really didn't get into what I wanted to share for several reasons, but one of the reasons is that I so desire, and I desire that not just for me, but for you, that we can get past, that we could, we could you know, not that we're not okay in the sense of with the Lord, but that we can move forward in his life and move forward in the, in the living reality of him um, and you know I, one of the things I like about certain football players is they say, they'll say to him in the locker room well you're fixing to go out and play a big game you know don't you want to 
you know, do some trash talking about the other team. And he says, you know, no, I, I'll do my talking on the field. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll manifest. You know, I'll do my talking on the field. Well, yeah. you know, that we could, that we could do that. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly, for that little smiley face. <laughs> and I, I'm going to assume that that means go on because she's yeah. happy with what I'm sharing. <laughs> Okay, so um, brother, we usually only go 20 minutes, 20 minutes is up, and then we'll start, we'll have a little break, and then we'll go again, so if this is weird to you, you can leave during the break. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving you an out, okay, you don't have to stick around, and then we'll come back and we'll do another 20 minutes, okay, bless you.